Hey there kids, welcome back. This is lesson 21, 22, 23, but we never really know where we are because they just call it 21, 22, 23, and a bunch of word problems. So super difficult, challenging word problems at the end of fifth grade in module six in your Eureka Math program. And the objective here is at the bottom and they are not kidding make sense of complex yes multi-step yes and persevere in solving yes them uh multi-step problems so share and critique peer solutions it's hard to do this when you're learning at home because there's no one to talk to so really really important if you are in school the best thing to do is to talk with your friends about what you think needs to be done they say what they think needs to be done, and then somewhere in the middle, you guys can meet up and say, well, that's what I thought too, and then you build your confidence that way. Working alone on math is nice if you've kind of got it all figured out, but if you are lost at any point, it's always helpful to talk it out. So let's start with Pierre's paper. Pierre folded a square piece of paper vertically to make two rectangles. Now. I find that having a visual aid is always really helpful, especially when I just don't understand these. These are very hard, complex word problems, so get something or draw something that you can fiddle around with to make it real for you. So if you fold this paper vertically to make two rectangles, then what you're talking about is something that looks like this. So you have to think about the dimensions of each side. Each rectangle had a perimeter of 39 inches. How long is each side of the original square? What is the area of the original square is another question. And what is the area of one of the rectangles is another question. So we have multiple questions. So if you have a little piece of sticky note or something handy that you can work with in your hands, that's great. If you don't, just draw it. So let's take a square. Okay, and then the AC just went on. Nice. It's a little bit loud. And then we will fold it in half with our dot, dot, dot. And what you know about perimeter, you should know by now, is that it's the distance around. So if I have the addition of all four sides, I get 39. Okay, but when I fold it, okay, the, it's the rectangle that we're adding up. Okay, so the pier folded the square piece into rectangles. And so the rectangle has a perimeter of 39 inches. Okay, so that's what we're gonna add. If I was doing the perimeter of the square, that'd be one thing, but the perimeter of the rectangle is another. Now, notice what happens when you put these little arrows here. This side stays the same and this side stays the same because we're not folding this side. But if you take this and this, what would be the long and the long becomes a half and a half. When you have a half and a half, you get one whole, therefore, I'm only really calculating three of these to get the 39 for the rectangle, okay? Because the original square, of course, has four sides, but we're using a half and a half. So if I take 39 and divide it by three, I can get 13 inches. And that would be the long side or the 13 inches because I'm folding it in half. So what about this length here? Well, I need to know what half of 13 is. So half of 13, and then this is essentially of means multiply. So this would be, um, sorry, I'm not gonna cross cancel. I'm just gonna straight multiply it there for you. So we get 13 halves, and then that's where you're going to uh, simplify. And you get 6.5 or 6.5. I really like decimals. 
uh, because it does make things a little bit easier to work with. So let's say we have now the dimensions of our rectangle and we have the dimensions of our square because if you want the whole side then you're just going to have your 13 inches because the square has four sides the same length. So let's start figuring out uh, what we need to do. Each rectangle has a perimeter of how long is each side of the original square. It's going to be 13. And just write it out. Is 13 inches. That's your one question. Then the second question is, what is the area of the original square? And we know that area equals length times width, so you're going to do 13 times 13. Because it's double digit, we'll use the standard algorithm. 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 1 is 3, 1 times 3 is 3, you can hold the 0 if you want, 1 times 1 is 1, add them up, and then you get 169 um, inches squared for the area of the original square. And circle or identify that that's what that is. Don't forget your two exponent. And then move on to the next one. What is the area of one of the rectangles? So if area equals length times width, this is the third question. We're going to take the length times the width to get the area. And again, two digits would be better for the standard algorithm to be written out like this. Now we're multiplying with the decimal. 5 times 3 15. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. You can hold it with a 0 if you want. 6 times 3 is 18. Carry the 1. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And we have multiplying with a tenth, which means one place there, one place here. And so the area of one of the rectangles is uh, area of one rectangle it is 84 and 5 tenths inches squared. So pretty challenging problems here. Fair, let's just say it very challenging problems here and I'll probably just do like two problems per video keep it really short um, and then I'll do a couple of these each day and we'll see how far we can get next one shopping with the least as he can straighten this out for you all right so we love shopping Elise saved hundred eighty four dollars nice job Elise she bought a scarf a necklace and a notebook. After her purchases, she still had $39.50. Okay, so we have the beginning and then we have the end. The scarf cost three-fifths the cost of the necklace and the notebook was one-sixth as much as the scarf. So we have a lot of comparing here. It's a great place for a tape diagram or two or three. What was the cost of each item? Then, don't forget this part, how much more did the necklace cost than the notebook? So we're going to compare these two. So let's take the information that we do know of, which is our first amount and our last amount. And we'll start with uh, our multiple steps finding out uh, how much she spent. Okay, so if we have $184. A hundred eighty four and I'm going to take away thirty nine fifty notice that I have thirty nine and fifty cents uh oh what do we do here now I'm not um, you have to line up by the decimal okay they're not out of order here you have to line up by the decimal what you have to do now is put two zeros for zero pennies zero dimes and we're finding the difference between because we want to know how much was spent so if you have nothing to pull from you can't just flip it around although it works here it it will never work for any other numbers except 50 but anyway we have to take one from here and we have to give it so we're going to regroup, take one, give 10, and here is my zero minus zero, and then uh, 10 minus five. 
and that's where we get the 50. So it just happens to work out, but you can't just flip it, otherwise you would miss out on this borrowing here. Three minus nine you can't do, so again, don't be afraid to go next door and take something. And then 13 minus nine, four. Seven minus three, four. And the one comes down, and you can see that she spent $144.50. Now, label everything carefully, okay? So $144.50 is spent. Now let's look at these tape diagrams and start comparing this three-fifths and the one-sixth, and let's make a picture of these. So second, let's make a picture. The scarf cost three-fifths, that's a fraction, of the cost of the necklace, okay? So then the notebook was one-sixth of that. So we need to look at the necklace as being like something that we can start with. So here is the necklace. Now I'm gonna have to cut this into fractional pieces. So let's label this necklace. Okay, now the scarf is three-fifths of that. So I'm gonna make a separate one just so you can see and three-fifths means divided into five pieces but the cost of the scarf is only here okay so this is the cost of the scarf the notebook was one-sixth as much as the scarf notebook okay now if this is one and it's only one-sixth the amount of this. We can put in the pieces if you want. Okay, but I only need one-sixth of this. If this is three, then I'm going to make six little pieces here. And the notebook is one of them. So to visualize, okay, this is what is purchased the whole the whole cost of the necklace then the price she paid for the scarf is three out of five of the necklace three-fifths of the necklace and then the notebook is one-sixth one out of six pieces as much as the scarf so you can even like put the little dotted lines to see oh yeah I can make six pieces there and I just need one of them so that's the notebook so what do I do now Let's do step three. So what's the cost of each item? Uh, we know how much was spent, so let's take a look at the 144.50 and see how many pieces I have so that I can figure out um, cost per unit size of my fraction pieces. So let's divide this necklace into our fifths, okay? Now I have five fifths. And because my notebook pieces are so small, I'm gonna create pieces that are the same size throughout. So now I have, instead of five fifths, I have 10 tenths, and then I have six sixths here so 10 plus 6 is 16 plus 1 is 17 so I have $144.50 divided into 17 pieces so talk about persevering we're going to do a division problem and we'll do the 144.50 divided by 17 when you divide with decimals and you have no decimal on the outside you put the decimal on the inside and you bring it up now I need to divide 144 by 17. 14 is not divisible by 17, so I have a single digit answer that will go right here above this four. And if I had about a 20, I'd say 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, that would be the five of them, and then I would have two more, that would be six, but it's less than that, and I'm multiplying it several times, so I would pick a seven or maybe an eight if I did seven times seven, it's 49, and then seven, that would only get me to 11 here. So I'm gonna do eight, what would eight get me? 
8 times 7, 56, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That works. So I'm going to try my 8. And I did all that in my head because I know my times tables. And then I don't have to have all that work on the paper. But you can have work on the paper if you want. 8 times, oops, 8 times 7, 56. I'm thinking 5, 56 that I need to carry over. 56. Then 8 times 1 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And the difference between 136 and 144 is 8. Bring down the 5. 85 divided by 17. Hmm. If I had 20, again, that would get me to 100 in 5 steps, but I have less. And if I use the 5, 7 times 5 is 35. I notice that, and then I carry the 3, and I see that I get 85 with no remainder. Don't leave it. Finish it. Got to have 0 down, 0 up. 0 times that is 0. So you don't have to do any more down here because it's all zeros, but you have to have that there. For money, we leave American money, dollars, in uh, or 8.50. If it's just units, you don't have to have the zero, but if it's money, you do have to have it. And for this one, it's how much is e each unit. So it is money. Now, what does that represent? That represents one little piece. It's the whole amount divided into 17 pieces so that each piece is 850. Now that you know the price of one, you can know the price of all. So I can say the notebook is $8.50 because that's only my single unit, okay? So that's one answer. But the scarf, I need to have six of those units. So let's go over here and figure out uh, step four, the scarf, which is going to be 850 times six units, two, four, six. And six times zero is zero, six times five is 30, 48, 49, 50, 51. And here is part two of your answer. You can put point zero zero. That always kind of makes it nice. We know it's money. And step five. What about that necklace? 850. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Well, gosh, you know, when you multiply by ten, you just go whoop. Make that, remember that step? Move the decimal to the right because you're shifting the digits left. One spot, the necklace is whoop, $85. Okay, that's not the end though. There's one more question. It says, how much more did the necklace cost than the notebook? So the necklace was $85. And the notebook was $850. And again, we have done some subtracting with zeros up here. And so you know that you have the zero minus zero, but you must regroup this. Go next door, take one, give 10. You know you'll get 50 cents, but you have to get that borrowing there. And then can't take 8 from 4, but that's okay. We have more here. Change that to 14, and then that would be 6, and the 7 comes down. And so the final question is how much more did the necklace cost than the notebook? And you can write it out. The necklace cost $76.50. More than the notebook. And click subscribe and come back for the next videos. I'm going to continue these on other videos. Hope you're enjoying them. See you on the next one. Bye for now.